I'm Gaz, and this is Let's Play Caesar 3. Uh, I've been avoiding games in the Caesar series, uh, mostly because I've never played them, but also just because I don't really care for the older impression city builders. Uh, I definitely think the mechanics of the games have been improved in later games. Um, however, reading through the, uh, the manual for this game, there is quite a bit of depth that I think got simplified in later games. Uh, obviously the core mechanics uh, are there, but the implementation is a little bit different, a little bit more involved. Uh, so let's just go ahead and start, and we will start as Gazeticus. Sure. Let your governorial training begin. First, you must learn the basics of constructing Roman settlements. Build areas of housing, and you'll soon see people move into your city. You can click and drag the mouse to build lengths of path at once. Plan paths carefully, with as few intersections as possible, to ensure people will walk where you want them to. At every intersection, walkers must choose which way to go. Each intersection lessens your control over their actual routes. So, uh, the first major difference is that there are no roadblocks in the game. And for a game that relies heavily on the pathway mechanic um, and a walker, uh, that's kind of a big deal. However, apparently uh, later on we can have access to gatehouses, which I guess effectively act like roadblocks. Uh, we don't have that now, however. Uh, also, uh, while I was looking up information about the game, uh, I came across uh, I guess a strategy for a, a way to sort of overcome that uh, through layout and uh, apparently people enjoy the 9x9 nine nine block and uh, the 9x9 nine nine block then expanding into what's called a G block because it resembles a lowercase g. Um, so there are layouts for this game that are heavily skewed towards making it uh, m more uh, suitable I guess for uh, for maintaining a walker without just having chaos all over the place. So anyway, uh, we got a pretty simple thing here. Uh, I cannot zoom in. That's something I think that we're missing as well. Um, I just have to create a nice little area for these houses to develop. And I'm just going to build it right on the main road here. Uh, obviously, I think to uh, maintain the integrity of the walker system, I'd want to build off of the road, but uh, since it's so simple right now, I will not do that. Now, I'm going to do a simplified version of the 9x9 nine nine block and just do a 5x5 five five block. Now, the reason it is like this is because the watering system in the game is also a little bit different. Uh, rather than have a watering well or, or whatever that you have a walker then go around and distribute water. You have wells and fountains and all these things and they don't need to be near the roads but they have a radius of effectiveness. And I believe the well is a 2 by radius. Uh, the fountain ends up being like 4 so that's why the 9 by 9 block. So we can let people in. Speed up a little bit. Greetings! I'm new to this place do you know of anywhere to live? Right here, my friend. Some of the buildings are also a little bit different. Um, it combines some of the jobs, like uh, the prefect, for example, not only is sort of the building inspector uh, for, uh, for fire damage, I think it is, but also acts as a policeman. goal was what let your governorial training 50 people okay so we're probably gonna need a little bit more and uh, I think that I'm just gonna put that right across the road here so the game seems to have a lot more emphasis on sort of the the nuanced details and statistics than later games um, for example your population actually has age, uh, which has impact upon education because they will go through a phase where you have a bunch of young people that need to be educated, and so demand for school because of that. First, fire. 
protect against fire, you need a prefecture near your housing. They tend to walk around, and uh, we, we kind of all know how this goes. Like I said, it is a combination. Oh my, I may need to turn that down. Uh, it is a combination of... Uh, okay, 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 thank you. A building inspector and a policeman. Again, also follows the uh, the pharaoh mechanic, where it first needs a walker to go out and uh, find employees, and then it has the employees go do their job. Oh my god! So this is you know, obviously a very bad decision that I've got going on here. I may as well just destroy all this stuff at this point. prevent it all from burning down anything anymore. Okay, we'll just we'll just clear out the whole damn place. Jesus. Let's try again. Uh, another thing too, uh, the manual has specified uh, the way that the Engineer's post. Put that right next door. Uh, has specified the way that the walkers come out and how they determine their pathing. And uh, so the first thing they look for is north and east and south and west, and they will rotate through that. So the first time your walker comes out, it will go the north route, then the east route, then the south, etc. So uh, it's even more important to have simplified intersections. So what I could do here is actually just probably clip off that road. I don't actually need it. Uh, pleasing the gods, we now need temples. And uh, the thing about the temples here is that, kind of like in later ones, uh, particularly Pharaoh, they like being on equal footing. So if you've got one god, uh, represented by a temple, the rest of them want temples as well. And there's festivals, but the festivals themselves aren't necessarily tied to the gods. Rather, you can just sort of have them, uh, and then make them dedicated to a god, and that will improve their mood. Uh, also, Congratulations! You have grasped the basics to my satisfaction. In the interest of advancing your education, I have one more gentle assignment for you. Onward to Brundisium. I feel like maybe I completed the goal faster. I thought I was also supposed to be given a little bit of information on the Senate. That was available to me over there, and I didn't get a chance to put it down. Um, as I was saying, so the, th the other thing about the gods is that in order to evolve, sort of like in later games, uh, certain people need access to more gods. Well, uh, that is sort of taken care of through structures, so obviously the temples, but uh, I think your higher up nobility need access to like four gods. So having to put down four or five temples all the time in your housing blocks can be kind of a pain. And apparently there is a later structure called an oracle, which sort of takes care of that. So it, it's a little bit different in the way it uses its structures. Uh, let's just continue on, I guess. Your priorities should be security, housing, food, and water in that order. Without housing and food, new immigrants will not move into your city. Rome now wishes your city to grow food. Build a farm on fertile land. Look for the yellow tufts that indicate this. Connect it to housing with a path. If the housing is too far away, the farm will not get access to labor. Build a granary near to the farm and make sure that it too has access to labor. When the wheat is ripe, a cart will carry it to the granary. Gradually, the granary will fill up. The fewer empty windows you can see, the fuller the granary is. Yeah, so it's not going to continue on telling me about the markets. Okay, well, we kind of, we kind of know how all this works. So, uh, let's find a 
suitable location. Now there's other things uh, as well that um, I'm not sure if they do have impact. I don't remember them having impact in later games. Uh, but it has the same desirability mechanic as before, but elevation is also taken into place. So like if I were to build up here, for example, uh, the housing area up here would have more desirable effects than housing down here, which is interesting. Uh, of course, this is taken up by our meadows, so I don't want to build over there, but just something to, to think about. Uh, something else I noticed, too, uh, in one of the sandbox maps is that occasionally some of these will have uh, barbarian encampments in them, which is something that was not in later games. Um, obviously, the military thing is going to be a thing. This is Rome, after all. But uh, I just, I, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of little nuances that might make this game a little bit of a different experience than others. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, sort of the standard layout that I expect to use later. And I kind of hate using up a lot of that space right now, but do it. So I'm going to come off the road just by one and uh, get this sort of started in here. So leaving one, two here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, since we don't have a lot of structures, now we do need 600 people. So maybe we'll need a little bit more than this. But for now, I think, uh, yeah, let's let's do that. So eight, nine. So actually, the road is going to be well, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what what this nine by also allows for is when you're doing your later buildings, uh, they will evolve to a three by three square, and so it basically allows you to pre-build an area of lower density housing that can then potentially evolve forward. It also allows you, like I said, to centralize your fountain, which will gain access to all of this, but more importantly, it also allows you, uh, I don't think we have access to it yet, uh, but it would also allow you to have um, beautification in, inside your, your blocks. So it, it's kind of an interesting setup, and I think for the sake of doing this, Put that there, and let's see. So we want to put an engineer's post up here, and we want to put prefecture, oops, prefecture here. So the way this will work is eventually I will have access to a, uh, a guardhouse that'll close off this block, and by putting your your uh, inspection buildings up here, it gives them an equal opportunity to come down in here and go this way. Uh, they will first go this way, because that's the northern exit, and then they will hopefully eventually go this way. Um, now, I'm going to potentially cause myself a little bit of a problem here, because I need to have access to my food, and therefore my granary and distribution are going to be on this side, so that is going to create another little road here that may end up being an issue. Um, Interestingly, this game has sort of a, an open source mod community. The game itself has not been made an open source version, but there's open source mods that utilize the game files and assets, and uh, one of which has uh, added roadblocks to the game. I don't know if I'll ever look at that. It depends on how well I like the game, I guess, um, that I might end up looking at future things like that. Now, another thing this does, too, is if I did ha have gardens, say, uh, I would take out these central ones to put gardens in, and uh, then that would allow me, basically, to uh, sort of close off the growth. Like, so if these did become 3 by 3s uh, this corner would most likely grow, and I could utilize that... Uh, to, to sort of limit that. So I can basically get a, a block of nine villas, I think is what the, the upper housing is called. Okay, let's bring this in here. And we need, we need a few things. So 
going to do wheat. Now, the, the manual also talks about uh, some of the statistics behind your farms and how many can be sustained uh, through a single farm, and there, there's a whole bunch of stuff that is spelled out almost immediately, uh, which is, is nice, I guess. Since we do have need to access people, I'm going to go ahead and put this here. Um, I'm also going to do... I'm not familiar with <laughs> where a lot of the things are, so this might be a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain whilst I learn. I guess I'll put the market there. Probably not a great idea. Probably a better idea to put it down here where it's actually going to be more useful. And actually, I think this is wrong too. I think there's supposed to be one more space in here where I can put gardens. So maybe I've done myself a disservice there as well. Because they're supposed to go along the outside just because of desirability and all that. But yeah, well, for right now, I think this will be fine. So put a granary here. And then, of course, I'm going to put an engineer post and all that on this side. Just so that we maintain this. Uh, that is kind of a departure from later games, I think, where the farms actually need to be uh, maintained with with people. I'm also going to put some some tents out here just so we have access. Um, but yeah, so I forget what game it is, but you can have the farms. I think it's Zeus, isn't it? Zeus allows you to have your farms just out there and they don't need to be watched. They won't collapse on their own like that. Uh, why don't we go ahead and put the Senate down, actually. So the Senate allows you to collect taxes, but it also has sort of a, a combination. For one, it's desirable, so actually maybe I'll put it right here to kill the undesirable aspects of this. Um, but you can see there's people sitting around. And that kind of indicates your unemployment levels. Um, and then, of course, just like Pharaoh, you can hover over it and you can see some of the statistics of your city. Okay, we're already selling wheat. People just buy the wheat, which is cool. Uh, wheat farms are apparently a better food source in that they grow their crops twice in, at, at double time. Um, so twice as fast as anywhere else they will produce a crop. So they're kind of a staple early on in the game for an early food supply. I should probably start getting some temples. Each of the gods, of course, has uh, their own benefits, as usual. Um, probably the earliest ones that are most useful would be Ceres. She deals with food and the croppage. Uh, Mercury is good for commerce. Uh, Venus is good for keeping your people happy and healthy. Obviously, Mars is war. And... Uh, Neptune is uh, the sea, but also storms, I guess. Is this just a bunch of crap floating in the water, or what's going on here? I don't know what that is. So we have unemployment of 7. I feel pretty good about that. Population only of 200, though. So this is definitely not going to cut it. We need a lot more. And I think not have access to water, right, because I built this too big. So, uh, this is too far away to be effective. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some wells in the corner here, and that should handle it. So we've gone from small tents to large tents, oh there we go, small shacks. They are not generating, ooh, they're going even higher because of gods, I guess? The large shacks. I think, you know, I don't actually need this. I can cut that road. Nobody that needs to get into the city has to utilize this road. So this is actually a bad thing to, to have. I've been letting people... Greetings! 
This city urgently needs more food. I guess so. And we've got a 1% unemployment rating. Which is interesting given that these houses have built up. Another thing too I found very interesting is that uh, according to the manual your population shifts upward and I think I need to reduce some of the sounds here. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, that when your houses evolve um, they will go towards the higher buildings. So your, your higher buildings will always maintain a population and newer people, newer immigrants that move in, will go to the lower houses. So all these tents that got abandoned, if there are some, for example, well, they've got some in the corner here, they haven't evolved yet. Eventually they will all go towards shack. But, uh, so, in this situation, if people were going into these larger houses, these larger buildings, and we got some immigrants coming in, they would first go to the tents before moving into these other buildings, which I think is interesting because I don't think later games did that. I think later games just sort of blanket distributed your people. I might be wrong about that. I, I guess I just never paid attention to it and I don't recall it ever being in the manuals. We are still apparently low on food though, so I will continue to add a little bit of farmage and uh, that's probably going to kill some of the, the need for the people. I should think, though, that we would get people coming in. So let's look at our chief advisor over here. Not available. Okay, great. So I have to guess why we are not getting immigrants in here. Can't look at labor either? Nope. So I think in order to do this, and we've... our population is not going up, so... I think it's a safe bet that we can just sort of add in here. I think we've reached the end of buildings I can add to the city. And in hindsight, this is probably a, a dumb thing, having that much. I, I guess I just don't have access to the gardens yet. So, I probably should have just still maintained a, a smaller block, mostly for uh, ease of food distribution and networking and all that. In fact, maybe... Maybe I should complicate this. I really don't want to complicate this, but I could add a crossroad in here. Maybe that would get them to, to move a little bit further and faster. I think we just need to get our food a little bit faster than, than we have been. Blessing from Venus. Goodwill in your city, it lifts the mood of your citizens. Good, good. tell what's going on there. So nobody's moving to the city. And there's a reason for that. But because I can't look at my advisors, I can't see exactly why. Uh, the mood of your city has an impact upon that. Uh, problems that your city faces has an impact upon that. There, there's actually a lot of nuance to the, the game that, like I said, they simplified and took out of later games, which I think is good. Providing water. Well done. Your farms are set up and running and your people have food. Now it's time to expand the settlement. Build a reservoir adjacent to the water. Fills with water. If your labor advisor has allocated enough workers to the water services, then build a fountain reasonably close. It fills up with water and it provides food. Or water. Okay, yeah. Second reservoir selects to, to build a second reservoir, select reservoirs again and move the mouse pointer over the first reservoir you built until you can see the green square around it. Hold the mouse button and drag it. You'll see a second reservoir connected to the other by an aqueduct. Oh. Your citizens prefer to have a fountain for their water over a well. Fountains deliver cleaner water and cover a wider area. Lots of overlay reports to manage your city. Okay, but I don't know that I've got access to the overlays. So, uh, let's now take care of that. There we go. We'll do a reservoir. Now, the reservoir itself also has a radius, and I think it's a pretty big radius. Uh, it appears to be okay here. I'm going to guess it is also going to need people. I'm going to put this fountain back into place here. Back in the middle, which I think is here. Needs more workers. Thankfully, they're coming in.
And they apparently have not got this close enough. Growing your city. You can now build more buildings. A bathhouse. Gardens. Theaters. Don't forget to build new farms before you run out of food. Okay. So it's immediately introducing some mechanics here. I guess we'll just take out some of the forest, because we're going to need some building area. Let's do a reservoir. I want to do that. I shouldn't need to build it too close. I will build it here, though. If people get the goddamn hell out of the way. So it seemed to imply that the aqueduct would be formed on its own, and that does not appear to be the case. It's okay. We can make one. And it does now have a fountain, so I can now get rid of these wells, and it should. Uh, the fountain has a 4x4 four four radius, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and apparently that also means the quarter or the corners. This is not going to evolve now because of that big ugly building. Lots of things are coming into play. Let's uh, build a forum, because that forum apparently will help with desirability for one. Uh, but it is also a tax collector, which is interesting. Uh, we'll put a theater down. A theater will help with desirability. Actors' colonies, not so much. So we're going to have to build that elsewhere. Okay. So I think I'll go ahead and put this here, and then I'll just connect that up. So we can continue this. Now, obviously, this uh, this thing that I've built here is not so great. I also do a school. Interesting. Um, I did not expect all these buildings to just suddenly come in here like this. So, in future, I will endeavor to actually make a little bit of a nicer place. It makes a little bit more sense. Probably eventually get myself a... Uh, layout, just as I did in uh, other games. Try to offset what we can with that reservoir. I'll have to look. That reservoir, though, does have a, a radius of an effect, so the Wrath of Mars. Smile swiftly if you dare, for though you have no military, Mars will not be so lightly insulted. Okay, I'm not really sure why. Can I look at that now? Yes, now I can look at my advisors. Very angry. I don't know why. I guess just because of that? I don't think I have access to anything military just yet. So he is angry for a reason that I have no... say over. Oh, because I built two. I, that's why. They don't have a temple to him. We need to get to 650. What do these people need? Too little entertainment in the area. Eventually we'll get an actor over here, and hopefully that actor will have basic education facilities, okay? Put that school down. You can see how not having roadblocks could be really detrimental to getting this place to evolve the way you want it to. Apparently pretty good on the food, so I'm not worried about it. much unemployment. It's distracted me from learning my lines. There are ever so many people looking for work here. Yeah, okay. Now evolved to a small castle. 
Puzzles cannot evolve and need supplies of pottery. I don't know that I've got that. Oh, we do. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Raw materials. Clay pits. So just how deep do I want to get into this? I guess I could maybe kill that one. That way they'll stick here at least. And we get, uh, let's see. Workshop. Pottery. Yeah, this, uh, this layout really doesn't do me any favors. That will just keep tearing that things down, I guess. Uh, probably should put down a new engineer post, new prefecture. And of course we also need a, a distribution for this, so we will need a warehouse, which I'll just put right here. And I think we'll just have it accept stuff. Now the uh, unfortunately the the special ordering thing doesn't seem to be as uh, like I can't say that I want you know half a quarter whatever so we're just sort of left at the mercy of it and I guess the way I'm expected to manage my warehousing is to just say whether or not I'm accepting it. A couple other things. Um, like, I can't tell it to empty. I can just say not accepting, and I have to wait then until it sells everything to empty it out of there. Otherwise, I just say empty the entire warehouse. So I'm not a fan of the way that this is overly simplified in this game. I much prefer how they later develop this stuff. And I can also make it become a trade center. So the way this game works, there's no trading posts. Uh, if you are selling things on the market, traders will just come to a warehouse uh, by specifying that the warehouse is a trade center that is effectively the first warehouse that they will go to. So again, a little bit of a difference here, but uh, boy, if I could just, if I could just get this to cooperate a little bit and get out of this stuff a little bit faster. Small tents are having a detrimental effect. Is that really it's this that's having an effect? So would it be worth tearing this out? It might be. Uh, it actually seems like the uh, overall impact itself of just having a nicer place to live overcomes that. Maybe I can put that in. I'll try and evolve some of this stuff. I'm just not getting to that level of education that I need to make this go. I've got room for extra ones. Why, why are people not coming? High unemployment, I guess. And no food. What? No food? We got plenty of food. Uh, I guess we will just try and tackle that by having more, more farms. That's really about the only thing I can do. Could have another granary, I suppose. Like, right now, this is taking a lot of wheat. And I guess it would be using that to sell. So what I can do now, I guess, is put down another warehouse here. This one, specifically, will not be accepting that. And this one will not be accepting anything else. I don't know, can I start a trade route already? I can. They'll buy wheat, okay? 
So the game's not really telling me a lot of things yet. But we kind of got this handled. So this one is only going to be buying wheat and pottery. Okay, I will. Uh, so that's something. I guess I can just put people to work in that. Employees now need it. And now we... Nope, we've got a trader coming in. We don't have more people moving in. That's a little disturbing. Well, we can always start a new block, I guess. This one I think I'll keep a little bit smaller. Possibly just keep it sort of as a small tent city. Again, I don't think that this is going to have the impact I want it to have. The fountain here is not so great. Trade with the Empire. Well done. Okay, so I took the initiative there. market too, I would imagine. Although that's going to make it a lot more difficult to maintain that market. We will put in baths though. Baths are always good to have. I can never remember. I just have a nice little area over here trying to push the people into the goal. That is the goal. Your priorities right? should be security, housing, food. Okay, increase the prosperity, but what does that even mean? I guess we did it. You learn quickly. You now have the skills to complete a real assignment. From now on, you can choose your career's direction. Take the more peaceful province to concentrate on governing, or the more dangerous one to confront Rome's enemies. Well, given how you know I enjoy the military in these games... <laughs> I think we'll be going down the peaceful route and just work on city building. So yeah, I'm going to have to really wrap my head around uh, the city layouts. It's going to be a little bit different. Anyway, I'm going to end this one here. I will see you next time.